seated. Let me just say that as the as the pastor, I'm glad I don't have to get up here and wear a bonnet and a breastplate with carbuncles and pomegranates on my on my my garment. <laughs> it's it's kind of awkward. Uh, so a while back, I talked about um, the attire. You know, they we're talking about old Baptist hobby horses, and everybody knows Baptist preachers are notorious, at least used to be. It seems like for preaching about wearing certain uh, things, how we dress, and and uh, particularly when it comes to uh, the the gender issue, and, and that's something that historically was talked about a lot. Uh, modesty, obviously, actually would be more like decency and co- getting, keeping yourself covered. And then there is the modesty factor, which has to do with not wearing stuff that's flashy and trying to draw attention to yourself in various ways. And so we talked about those kinds of things, which apply to to everybody, every believer uh, should consider those kinds of things. And then I mentioned in that message a while back, I don't remember how long ago it was, that I wanted to deal with the attire of uh, the pastor or the leaders uh, of the church or those who get up here and preach and didn't know exactly where the sermon would go, but I was thinking about that. You know, sometimes you see, you know, uh, somebody might talk about preachers and how they wear suits and some people like that. Some people don't like that. You know the story about somebody that used to come to this work. And uh, after he left, he said the big like, thing that he really hated about this work is that that pastor wouldn't even let people preach if they didn't have a suit on. And he just got so mad about that. And like, well, what is that? Why do we do those kinds of things? Why do we have some kind of expectation about what people wear? Uh, and why should we enforce that kind of stuff? And so anyway, this is the kind of thing that I wanted to uh, uh, to study. And I want to preface by saying a couple things. Uh, one, I don't believe that we should put too much emphasis on attire, right? I think people go too far on that. Sometimes it's all they want to talk about. It's super important how somebody's dressed. You know, uh, I remember and and. I understand why they were doing it, but I remember when I went to practice uh, preaching classes, homiletics class, whatever, in Bible college, there was such an emphasis on what we wear, and it's like while you're preaching, they're sitting there saying, hey, well, you had this wrinkle over here, or I noticed this or that, and I understand where they were going, and they weren't trying to uh, make too big of an issue out of it, but it came across almost like, wow, can't a guy just get up and preach, and you just think about what he's saying and not what he's wearing, and and look, whether it's the preacher or how another pastor uh, dresses, you know, there are some churches where they the pastor doesn't wear a tie or a jacket, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it gets real easy to be like, oh, that's because they're liberal. Well, that's my estimation. We were talking about earlier, uh, Brother Austin and I were talking about when churches first start uh, uh, putting up the songs on the wall, you know, that has the, the, you know, instead of opening up a hymn book, they would sing the hymns. And you're like, there's nothing necessarily wrong about that. You're just looking at the words. And in fact, one of the good things about that is everybody's looking up. You're not have your face buried in a book. They're looking up, and you see all the words on there, and everybody can sing that out. I've been to a lot of churches. They did that. There was nothing wrong with that church. It's kind of like a, a matter of preference, but also like just this thinking like, you know, a lot of times throughout history, we've seen churches, uh, more recent history, seen churches kind of go that way, and they become more contemporary. They start dropping the tie, and they start doing all these different things. I remember the first time people started wearing the microphones like this. You know, and it was like, oh, what are you doing? you're becoming liberal. Hey, you know, there's a time, and I'll probably mention this here a little bit later. There was a time where preachers would say, and I got a preacher friend that right after he became a pastor, this was a rule that he enforced. And later on, he backed down and said that was kind of, the way I understand it, he, he thought that was kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's still his preference, but he realized enforcing that would be hard. But he had a rule that if you came to his church to preach, whether you were a missionary, guest speaker, a visiting pastor, or, or whatever, uh, you had to wear a white shirt that was your part of your attire you had to have a white shirt i'm personally like okay well if he asked me to preach i'd wear a white shirt right some people were like oh what a legalist or something like that like i don't think that you should put too much emphasis on clothing and i also don't think that you should just uh you know just let another another pastor and another church make those decisions you know we just don't want to put too much emphasis on it either way we certainly individually don't want to put too much emphasis on our own clothing and make a big deal about it. And we have to have the certain style and the certain, you know, we don't want to put too much of it. In. And I'm trying to say this as a preface because I'm going to talk about clothing. And you could take words that I say out of context and be like, man, he thinks too much of, 
of this or that, but really I don't think that we should. Uh, there are some principles that, I, that are good for us to consider, uh, but ultimately I don't think we should put so much emphasis on it. Here's what Jesus said about, uh, about this. He said, therefore I say unto you, Matthew 6, 25, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Okay. Now he doesn't say like, you know, just go around naked or go around, you know, wearing rags or go around, you know, like clothes aren't important at all. He's just saying, hey, don't just take thought about that and worry about what am I, where am I going to get my clothes or what if I'm not re- wearing the right uh, brand of clothing or what? If, some people just worry about it too much. Jesus says, don't, don't worry about that. The, our life's a whole lot more uh, than that. Okay. But what we, anything that we do, obviously we want to do it as unto the Lord. We want to know, is there anything the Bible says about that? Any principles that we can apply to ourselves to keep us safe and keep us, uh, you know, doing the best we can to please God and to be orderly, decently in order, all that kind of stuff. And so there are some things that I'm going to, that the Bible is lacking in these areas that I'm going to just give some, you know, some advice. Here's what I think is a good idea. I'm going to try to provide a, a few thoughts, but ultimately... Uh, we our desire is just to please the Lord and to be the most beneficial, the most effective uh, that we can. Uh, what does that mean? Sometimes when I'm knocking on doors, I feel like having a suit and tie hinders me, right? They don't want to listen to me because they think, oh, what is he, a government agent? What is he, a, a salesman? Is he a, or is a, a Jehovah's Witness or something like that? You know that we've all had that kind of a talk. And sometimes I go back and forth and I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't dress so uh, so, you know, suit and tie whenever I'm going to knock on doors. And not too long ago, somebody came and visited our church and I, uh, visited the church in, in Iola, and they said, uh, I don't know what they're saying about this. They're like, oh, nice, nice suit. And little did they know it's the same suit that I wear every single <laughs> service. But, hey, nice suit. I really like that. And they said, in fact, I'm kind of jealous. I don't know exactly what they were saying, but I almost wonder if it was like, oh, fancy, you know, preacher wears suits. And apparently they don't wear suits at the church that that, that, that person came from whenever the, 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 you know, the preacher doesn't wear suits. How many of you heard that kind of idea? Like, oh, if I could, you know, dress like a pastor, you know, a lot of people talk like that. I've heard it lots of times. Little do they know that suits don't really cost that much anymore, <laughs> especially if you get them as a Christmas gift <laughs> or like this I got, I think, uh, at my ordination. So I've been wearing it like like uh, this uh, swapping off with another suit for three years every time I preach. And then there's another suit that whenever I uh, lose 40 pounds, I can get back in. <laughs> but, uh, but look, it's not like I've just got like the fanciest, like, you know, thousand dollars. I don't even know how expensive they can get. But I can tell you this, I have been shopping before, and I know that some people will wear a pair of jeans that has holes in it that cost them $200 or maybe even $100, or maybe even $50. And I wouldn't pay that for a <laughs> well, Okay, so I, I may have paid $50 before. But, uh, uh, but you know, so it doesn't really matter. You say, oh, well, man, fancy suits. Yeah, that probably doesn't cost any more than like a designer T-shirt nowadays. <laughs> you know, uh, I used to work at Dillard's, and I and I worked in like the, I didn't work in suits, but I worked in like a, a, the, the kind of, I can't remember what it's called, like a casual. They're like more casual, but not, not super casual. That was called denim. Uh, okay. And so I worked for a little while in the casual. They were nice clothes, khakis, pullovers, you know, uh, uh, different name brand, things like that. And I was like, hey, man, these are almost expens- as expensive as those suits over there. And, and I thought, man, if, I'd have to go shop over in the, the denim section. And then they moved me one day to start working in denims. And I started looking around at the prices and I was like, whoa. These, uh, they were like a lot of clubbing clothes, you know, where they had these certain shir- shirts and like I said, the, the, the jeans with holes in them and stuff like that. Those were more expensive than some of the suits, <laughs> right? So look, suits are so expensive, and, but they look nice. And that's why people think that, you know, they got the shoulder pads, they got the, you know, the, these uh, lapels here and they look nice. So people just assume, hey, fancy, you know what I mean? And uh, so <clears throat> what does the Bible say about People wearing suits, nothing. <laughs> what does it say about what a, if a pastor ought to wear a suit or whatever? Nothing. Okay, here's what I know, though. Just I'm going to first, uh, before we look at some Bible verses uh, or the, the text that we just looked at, I want to uh, talk about 
observation, first of all, that we, we just see from leaders in our society today. And there's a lot of uh, studies that have been done. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people have talked about this subject. I've opened this up like five times now. And uh, so it's talking about going liberal here. Uh, this isn't my Bible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so, you know, what do leaders today, what would you expect leaders to dress like, okay? Here's an influential person. See if anybody remembers him. Can you see that? <laughs> that's, that, that's Trump, okay? Uh, notice he always has a suit on. He always has a suit on. Uh, usually it's a solid color tie and all that's kind of his style or whatever. How do I get out of there? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so you say, okay, that bad example, okay? Why, why are you starting with Trump? Here's what I'm saying. He was a president. Before that, he was a businessman, and he didn't dress any differently when he went from being a businessman to, uh, uh, to the president when it came to, like, his formal wear. This is what you call formal. If he's getting up there making a speech to the nation, if he's walking around meeting with other dignitaries and he's doing all this stuff, you can expect he was always dressed in a formal attire. And it looked at, I can't really tell from this picture how much he spent on that suit, right? That's not important, really. The thing is, he looks nice. Uh, notice he does have a white shirt on. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a classic look. Something that hasn't gone out of style for many, many years. I mean, uh, uh, probably it's not something that he bought in the 70s, but I'm just saying, like, you know, there's not been that huge of a difference in style when it comes to uh, men's suits, all right? And so you say, uh, yeah, but does he always wear? What do I got here? I was opening this up, and I had to get Sharice to show me how to do this, all right? Does he always wear that? No, sometimes he takes the tie off. And where's a red cap? <laughs> okay, right? Sometimes where, you know, this is his casual, his business casual. Like I'm just shooting the breeze with some folks and I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to look casual. So what do I do? Take the tie off. Now, I remember uh, that, that brother, uh, Sam Davison, a pastor when I was in, uh, in Oklahoma City, uh, Southwest Baptist Church, he was the pastor there and he would dress like that. Um, he looked very, you know, similar style. Typically had a white shirt. Not always, but that was his preference. Most of the time he had a white shirt. And something that does look sharp about white, uh, if it's white, but it's clean. This is one of the reasons I don't wear white shirts that much, because they start looking like yellow shirts, okay? Uh, sweat a lot in them and all that, and I don't have time to always go, uh, or the money to always go buy them or, and get them cleaned in a certain way or whatever. So after a little while, they start looking kind of dingy. But there is something sharp about wearing a white shirt that shows that you're, you're clean and dressed and, and all that kind of stuff. That's typically what he would wear. You say, yeah, but he was representing the, uh, he was representing the conservatives. So, of course, he's going to wear it. So the, look how many people didn't like Trump, right? And so uh, they wouldn't vote for Trump. They don't want him to, uh, oh, by the way, he also had a, he also had a real casual. Well, that's it was like golfing. Real casual. Man, I was looking at him, and I was like, okay, the suit jackets hide a lot, right? And they, and people always make jokes about him being fat and uh, eating McDonald's and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't think he looks that bad. I mean, you know. And then I saw him like that, and I was like, all right, he's got to. But, you know, probably didn't look much different than I do if I wore that. <laughs> anyway, that's another matter. On that, you know, I think also a Christian, this isn't in my notes here, I think a Christian ought to. Think about that, not to look sloppy, because if you're overweight, it actually can look kind of sloppy, all right? Uh, different people are different shapes and sizes. There's some things you can't handle, you can't uh, control, but anyway, something to think about. Look, he has a, this is super casual, man. He's on the golf course, but he's got khakis on, shirts tucked in, nice polished belt. Uh, you know, he looks the part. And let me say, if I went to go work out, I probably wouldn't wear this, right? If I went to... Uh, uh, go camping, probably not going to wear this. Uh, this is just, you know, but I look a certain style that still looks respectable in a certain way, still kind of gives me a sense of a, uh, of looking like uh, having authority and all that. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to get into some of that here in a minute. But you say, yeah, but okay, this is a conservative guy. He's representing the conservatives. And so you can't use that uh, example. What about a liberal guy? Here is your current president, like him or not, he's your president. <laughs> and look how he's dressed. Look pretty conservative, doesn't he? 
no, he's not conservative. <laughs> but this is where from the time that you're in school, he was probably raised to, hey, dress for success, and you got to, you know, you got to just dress uh, the part, and people will respect you if you dress a certain way. And uh, I remember reading this article where he's, you know, he's Catholic, but he went to go see the Pope one day, and I read this article where his mom made him promise that he wouldn't kiss the Pope's ring because that was that was like too humiliating to get himself down to that level and do that and and you need to be worried about your self-respect and so he did so even though he's a supposedly diehard catholic he refused to do that and everything because it's all about you know he needs to look respectful and all that stuff look i'm not getting into like how we're supposed to act <laughs> the fact that we're uh if a person's in a position of a leader of leadership or he's you know, a representing somebody, you know, we send somebody as an ambassador to another country or whatever, they're going to dress the same way. Somebody's uh, in any, pretty much any political office, that's how they're going to dress. CEO of a company, most of the time, I'm going to get into that here in a minute, okay, but a CEO of a company, most of the time, going to dress like that. Now, uh, you could throw some, some, uh, some different people out there. I hate to even go down that road. So what about uh, Mr. Biden here? Is he ever uh, dressed casual? Yes, you see a lot of pictures like Trump where he'll lose the tie at a certain uh, outing because it's like, hey, I, I still want to look nice. I still want to look sharp, but I want to go somewhat casual. So he'll lose that. Oh, I, mentioned, I, I, I got distracted. But earlier I was talking about Sam Davidson. And I remember he was always in a suit. And I was like, I wonder if he wears a suit everywhere. Well, sometimes we'd have like a prayer breakfast when a missionary would come or something, we'd have a prayer breakfast and he would go, he would lose the tie and he'd be like, well, I wanted to go casual. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, what's so casual about that? All you do is take the tie off. For him, that was casual. Or he would wear khakis and a blazer instead of a, a, a whole suit. I mean, there were different things that had more of a casual feel to it, but still, uh, still, dress, still dressed up. And this is what presidents do. Uh, Biden was the same way. And then I saw a picture where, guess what? He's got that white pullover shirt very much like a uh, uh, Trump minus a few pounds and he had a polished belt on and his shirts tucked in and still looking sharp, right? Because he's been taught that is how he's supposed to look to dress for success and what have you. If you study the history of suits, wearing suits, formal wear, uh, and all this, in fact, if you study fashions of the day, men's fashions of the day, okay, this is primarily who we're talking about. If you study that, you'll find that most of the time, the uh, the styles and the the way people dress was heavily influenced by the military leaders of that day. That makes sense, right? You had the president, uh, who was the the top the commander in chief, and then you had all these. Uh, you know, that was just like the night the idea of if you're getting super dressed up and you're in a super important position or whatever. It was kind of like. Hey, the pre like the president, you know, and and uh, and so if you look at the military, now these aren't this isn't necessarily like the captains or whatever, but this is just uh, the average uh, marine. Uh, I only picked the marines because my dad is a marine, so and I think they look they dress pretty sharp. Okay, uh, so this is a marine in in their their most formal attire. There might be something more formal than this. I don't know, but this is the most formal I ever saw. And this was uh, called the dress blues, okay? And so they would wear these dress blues. All their brass uh, uh, buttons are polished. Shoes are shine. I remember see, watching my dad spit shine his shoes early in the morning before he went to work. Uh, this thing, they spent a lot of time shining that. And they'd brush their hat, and they'd make sure everything was pressed just, just exactly right, you know, no wrinkles. And, uh, and, and they just made everything. Everything had to fit the right size. I mean, uh, there's certain things regulations you know your shirt jacket has to go over your hands it can't be too short but you can't be too long and I mean I'm certain strict rules that they had to follow and then they'd have inspection and you'd go stand there and they'd watch them and all that right because they wanted to look sharp and you know you got guys guarding like a, a government building or or you know representing the country in the various ways you want them to look sharp and so this is uh, something that, that the military has done you go back all through history that's the way it was right you didn't want uh, somebody, uh, you know, not dressing sharp. A little more casual. This would be like lose the tie. They didn't have a tie in those in that other suit, but the same principle. Lose the tie, kind of dress casual. They had what was called a. Uh, uh, is that what's called a? Uh, not Charlie's. What are these called? 
I can't think of what they're called, you know. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but uh, uh, I can't remember what they call these things. But they, these are the more casual clothes. Maybe they're called casuals. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you see here, uh, pressed. Everything looks nice. He's got collared shirt, button down, a nice polished uh, belt, shirt tucked in, shoes polished. Look, I'm not saying that everybody's going to wake up every morning and pay such attention to detail in all of their clothes and all that stuff. I'm just saying this was something uh, is people do so that whenever their people look at them, they, they look respectable, they look clean, and they look, uh, you know, like, like they have authority. Even in their casual, I mean, their, their uh, camis or camos, uh, this is what they would actually fight a battle in, different colors depending on where they go. If they go in the desert, obviously they're more, uh, uh, you know, sand color. And uh, but look, same thing, button down, nice looking. They got the boots on, the hat, you know, all, all nice. OK, so there are certain things. And, and, and so obviously our styles don't necessarily look like the military. But what I'm saying is that it's kind of passed down. You want to be somebody who's respected. You want to have somebody uh, who looks like they're an authority and they can handle themselves. And and let me say this about clothes real quick. If you now, if you are the president or you're a CEO or you're in some kind of position, the way and this is based off some of those studies, by the way. And I'm sorry, I'm not getting in the uh, Bible. We will uh, look at the Bible here in a second. Uh, that's obviously way more important than all this. Okay, but uh, but if you will uh, study like some of these studies that have been done, research that's been done, they will say that sometimes when people are dressed up, it hinders their performance. But I'm going to tell you what that is, okay, because I've experienced it many times. My parents used to make me, because uh, I didn't go to a Christian school, but they kind of wanted to send me to a Christian school, and they wanted me to have a little bit of discipline and, and different things. And so even when I went to a public school at first, as I got older, I kind of got away with some things. But it was like, hey, you're going to dress nice. Your shirt's always going to be tucked in. You're going to have a belt on. You're going to uh, do certain things. And I remember, for the most part, it wasn't a big deal. But when you're in a certain situation and you have to do something and you're uncomfortable, it makes it hard to focus. It makes it hard to, you know, that's clothes. You don't want to just wear clothes to fit a certain mold or something like that, but they're uncomfortable. You want something that's comfortable. You want something that you're, you're happy to be in. You know that you're fitting the part and, uh, and you have confidence whenever you do it. You're doing it with confidence. That's what a, that's, that is something that would help somebody to be a leader and to be even creative and all this, the studies show. Uh, I, I remember reading this a long time ago where they, uh, oh, good grief, I can't figure this thing out. Okay, uh, where they talked about this casual Friday. A lot of businesses were going to casual Friday. Like you got to dress up every other day of the week, but on Fridays you can come in relaxed. And what they found out was the performance stunk on those days because everybody's mind was just gone. They weren't paying attention, you know, to how they're dressed and all that kind of stuff. And so, like, your clothes do play a part in your performance, in your confidence level, in the way that other people respect you and they think about you whenever you're talking. You know, you're more likely to walk down the street and somebody call you sir if you have a suit on. And so that makes sense. You know, if you're going to get up to represent uh, the church, you're going to read, uh, preach from the Bible, get up behind the pulpit, and you look a certain way, people might respect that, okay? And so this is uh, something that has been uh, just known for many, many years, and that's why even presidents and all do that to this day. You say, well, what about somebody like Steve Jobs or somebody like, uh, you know, you look at some of these CEOs who broke the rules and they get away with that. Well, there's something to that, okay, because here's the deal. They even study on professors. Most of the time, if a, if a professor dressed up, suit, tie, looked nice, he's in his formal wear, and he's teaching a class, most people would respect him and think, hey, this is an intelligent guy. But they did these studies, and they found out, but the guy who breaks the rules, people always thought that that person was intelligent. And the reason why is because of the authority uh, that he uh, showed by taking a bold stance and saying, I'm not going to conform with everybody else. And some people thought, hey, a free thinker, he's super smart and all this kind of stuff. So that's why you see a study in clothing today when it comes to CEOs, even pastors. They're saying, you know what? I want to break the rules. I want to be a rebel. I want to be somebody who, uh, uh, you know, they look at this guy and say, man, he's a leader. He's not going to be, you know, conform to all that. And sometimes it works. 
And sometimes it's just guys really trying to conform with all the other preachers that are doing it. <laughs> right? But that's why you get that. So you get guys. I remember watching this thing on, on uh, Mike, who's the pa pastor at the place uh, that we went to that one time, IHOP. And, uh, and I remember watching this thing where he was kind of bragging about how he's known for being a guy that never wears a tie. Right? Which is interesting because here's a guy of a big church, non-denominational, uh, super what we would call liberal, and you're thinking like, uh, okay, so he he realizes like most guys like him would wear a tie, but he's like I'm known for the guy that doesn't wear the tie, right? That gives him like this this prestigious, you know, look, man, he's he, you know, he knows how to. He doesn't want to break uh, uh, fit the mold. So what does he do? He loses the tie, but he's still got the white shirt on. He's still got the dress shirt, right? Because people aren't going to respect him if he shows up in a pullover to preach in. Now, you say, well, there are some people doing that. Well, that's true. There's always people trying to set trends and, and do things a certain way. And now all the preachers are saying, hey, we want to be just like the common folk. And, and we don't want to, like, like, you know, propose to being somebody special. And so we want to be like the common folk. So they're up there preaching with a coffee cup in their hand and they're in jeans or shorts and they're in a, a Hawaiian shirt or something like that. And they're just like, you know, I'm just like you guys. And then they have like the contemporary, that's the contemporary service. And then they have the conservative service where they show up in a suit. I'm just like you guys, you know, I'm, I'm conservative and all that. And they think that, hey, well, we got to be all things to all people or whatever. But look, the president of the United States doesn't think that. You know, CEOs of most companies, for the most part, realize that if I want authority, if I want to be treated with respect, if I want to be listened to, I'm going to have to dress a certain way. Okay, so since we're talking about preachers, anybody knows uh, a couple guys who are known for uh, having the largest congregation? Joel Osteen, believe it or not, doesn't have, I don't even think he's in the top 10 anymore. So there's mega churches that are that big. <laughs> Okay, I don't even think he's uh, that big yet, but here's old Joe, old, old Smiley, suit and tie. Now, you might look at that and some of the things that I said and say, I don't want to look like a president. I certainly don't want to look like Joel Osteen, <laughs> right? I don't want to look like these things. So I don't think I'm going to wear a suit and tie because I don't want to look like those guys, right? So at some point, you have to decide, well, who do I want to look like? Or you can just say, look, I'm just going to stick with that, which has worked for many years and it's traditionally understood that this is how independent fundamental Baptists dress and this is how people in leadership dress and this is how conservatives dress, all those things. Like, why would you fight against that and say, no, I want to be liberal. No, I want to be, you know, less conservative. I want to be. Now, I'll say this. Here's where my mind goes, though. Back to the whole idea of knocking on doors. I don't want anybody thinking I'm a, a Jehovah's Witness, right? I'm not going to dress like an Amish because I don't want anyone thinking that I'm Amish, that I that I believe like them. I'm not going to get up here and preach in a in a black robe with a white uh, collar. I don't want anybody thinking I'm a Protestant or a Catholic, right? I don't want to. Uh, so there are certain things that yeah, you have to consider. Hey, I can't dress like that because people associate that with something else, you know. So could there be a time where you know, hey, I want to dress like this as a pastor because people are going to associate me with like. Uh, you know, uh, corrupt politicians and salesmen and all that. Probably that's pr quite possible. Like I said, there are some neighbors. Nobody wants to answer the door whenever you're dressed in a suit. You know, hey, maybe they're coming to get my kids or they're <laughs> they're with the government or something like that. You know, and so they don't want to answer the door. I don't know why. They just don't respect. You know, but you get a guy there with jeans and a t-shirt and tattoos all over, and they'll listen to him all day. It just depends on who you're talking to, neighborhood. But it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, I'm just going to try to uh, do my best to represent the Lord and to, uh, and, to, and to present God my best and to feel the best, feel the most uh, uh, productive and efficient for doing what God wants me to do. So back in uh, Exodus 28, this is one of the only places where we have a, a dress code that is given us in the Bible. And it's of those priests, okay, and, uh, and it says there in verse, go back to Exodus 28. And verse 2 says this, Thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. And it calls them holy garments. 
Okay, holy means that which is separated or set, set apart. You know, it's special, it's holy, it's consecrated, and, uh, and it's set apart. So, so he says, make holy garments, and he says, make them for the glory and for beauty. Right now, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna try to give some some practical application, but let me say this real quick: the the popes, the pope, from what I understand, and maybe priests in general, kind of pattern themselves after this because they think they're the priests. That's why they call them priests. Okay. Now Jesus did away with the office of the priest. He's the high priest. Okay. We are all in in a in a manner of speaking, according to the Bible, uh, priests. All right, we can go straight directly to God. We don't need a man to intercede for us, okay? So praise the Lord, we're like the priest. Jesus was the high priest. He already took care of all that. And we're like kings and priests. So you say, okay, so we got to all dress like priests. Well, no, no, no. The idea is that, that there are some things about the way the, dress, the, the priests dressed in this uh, that, you know, were symbolic, you know, that we, we don't, we, but we don't necessarily do any of these things anymore. They're not important. And I would never want to get up here and look like a priest, that's for sure, or, a, uh, or the pope and, uh, and look uh, kind of silly like they did. But let's be honest, some of the things in this chapter right here are pretty silly, you know. And so this is what we see. But here's what he said. He, I wanted them to make them, he wanted them to be beautiful, and he wanted them to show glory. He wanted them to be holy garments. Here are a few uh, practical thoughts about, about this. Number one, you could, you could certainly identify and single out who the priest was. If you walked into uh, the tabernacle there, the temple, I mean, you knew. Or just walking down the street, I guess. I don't know. I don't, know if you, I, think, I, don't, I don't think that they dressed like that all the time. I think it was just whenever they were performing their duties. Okay, but you could recognize, hey, that is the priest. There's no doubt about that. And you could also uh, recognize that he looked sharp. He took his position seriously. Uh, he had an intimidating kind of a, a, a feel about him that gave him a little more of authority and all that kind of stuff. This was the idea. This is how God set for the priest. And that makes sense. You know, and I, I, I don't think that the pastor has to be, you know, uh, any higher of a position or, or look differently than anybody else in the congregation because we're all equal. We're all uh, servants of God. Uh, but at the same time, it makes sense that when somebody walks into a church, They'd probably think, hey, are you the pastor? Anybody ever been asked that? Hey, are you the pastor here? When I was an assistant pastor, I got asked that all the time. The reason why? Because I had a suit on, right? Are you a pastor? They just recognize that here's a guy. Now, can you imagine going to a church where a lot of people in the congregation wear suits, and then you get the pastor up there in, in jeans and a T-shirt? Are you the pastor? Oh, no, no, he is. He's got coffee in his hand. And, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with coffee. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> The casual approach, man, I'm just, no, it makes sense that the guy who's in charge is going to look a little bit more, uh, you know, of a position of authority. And so, the, look, nowadays, a lot of people that don't go to church, they look at the fact that, oh, well, that church, you know, that preacher wears a suit. And they look at that like it's a bad thing. But it really makes sense that, that you know, look, if, if it didn't seem to affect Joel Osteen's attendance in his congregation, okay, but the fact is that, hey, you just want to look presentable. You want to look nice. You want to really like people to know that this is a serious thing that we're doing. It's important, all right? I'm taking my job seriously, and I want to have a little bit of authority behind, uh, uh, behind my appearance whenever I... Okay. And uh, from the uh, text, we also see that they were very covered, right? That was important. That the, nobody could see their nakedness or whatever, so they're covered. They were very formal. They just looked sharp. They looked uh, impeccable. Now, here are a couple, uh, just real quickly, a couple things you can look through there and see. They had the breastplate or the ephod. Elsewhere it calls it the curious girdle of the ephod. And this uh, was some kind of breastplate that apparently had 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. So you had these fancy uh, jewels, you know, on them. And then they had a, a robe of some sort under that. And uh, they had a broidered coat over that. So that's kind of like the jacket, if you think about that, like over that. They're covered, okay, and they're, and, and, and they're sharp looking. Uh, they had a miter. I'm so glad we don't have to wear like a turban. I think that's kind of like a turban. I'm so glad I don't have to wear that. Or a bonnet 
Uh, I don't know what the bonnet looked like, but I know the, the Catholic priests have them real funny hats, and I'm like so glad I don't have to wear anything like that uh, to be appreciated <laughs> and to be respected. In fact, I think it would be hard to respect somebody that looks uh, looks so silly. <laughs> okay, but uh, uh, now, I don't know, nobody knows what that priest actually looked like in Exodus 28. By Jesus' time, there were people walking around who were authorities, priests, uh, uh, Pharisees, all that kind of stuff. And there were some things that they kept up with, uh, maybe that they based off of Old, Te- uh, Old Testament scriptures, but nobody really knows how they look because the history of Israel, they would go long periods of time where nobody even followed this stuff. They weren't even following the Lord. And then they'd go into captivity and all this kind of stuff and adapt to some of the ways of the culture that they were in at that day. Okay, so all these things changed. And, and, and in time, in Jesus' day, the spiritual leaders probably didn't look anything like the priests. In the, even the high priest probably didn't look anything like the priest in the... Uh, in Exodus 28. We really don't know, but they, they still had that to go off of, and they looked at some of that. But let's see what Jesus says about some of the uh, uh, practices that were going on that, in that day. Luke chapter 20. Look at verse 46. Luke 20, verse 46. Jesus said this, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greeting in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a show make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. Now say, what would that look like today? Well, I don't know because people don't necessarily go go walk around with a long, you know, you know, my jackets or something. I don't know. Maybe Benny Hinn. I think he wears something like that, Uh, you know, but they want to go like long, you know, robes. But that was the style of the day that showed like, oh, wow, look at that person. You know, he's got this long robe and and it looks real, real glorious, I guess. Now, I think the idea was, hey, these guys love to be recognized as they're walking around like, whoa, look at that guy over there, you know. And and, and I would see probably uh, some pastors today, when they're walking around, you know, they're at a restaurant, and they're like, hey, doesn't everybody see me? Don't they know who I am? You know, and they want to look real fancy. Usually they look real real rich. You know, those are the type of people that want to be seen. Look at the car I'm driving. Look at my nice thread. Look at my, my gold chain and my, my bracelets and all my rings. And, and believe it or not, there are preachers that want to be seen that way because they're like, whoa, this man, God's blessing him. Look how, how glorious he is and, and all that. Jesus said, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Preachers are supposed to be humble. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be servants. Uh, they're not supposed to be flashy and trying to get attention to themselves and all that. Uh, but I think a respectable man in that day still dressed up and looked nice, and, uh, and I believe Jesus did as well. Uh, let me see. Look at, uh, well, you don't have to look there, but in Deuteronomy it talks about, uh, you know, high, uh, uh, write these things on your forehead and, and write them on your uh, on the doorpost of your of your houses and all that and stuff. Okay, and so I don't have to quote that exactly. You get the point. What he was saying is, you want to uh, hide God's word in your heart. All these things that I said, you want to write those down. You want to be able to see them and all that. Well, by Jesus's day, they had what they call phylacteries. Okay, which uh, uh, another word would be kind of like an amulet. I think that's where that word, the origins of that word, is like an amulet. Okay, uh, speaking of amulet, to, an, an amulet is something that's sort of a superstitious kind of a thing. It's just like, hey, you have this, this thing brings you good luck, all right, and it's usually like a medallion of some sort or whatever. And so I was knocking on a door today, uh, and it had like, the door was just plastered with like images of Mary and uh, the saint, I guess, I don't know who, who they all were. And, uh, and then over there, a giant crucifix. And on the crucifix was, a, was, a, was another crucifix that was hanging on it like, a, like an amulet, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just like, it had Jesus on there, and I'm like, you know, this person's probably like, hey, protect my house, spirits of, of the crucifix and, and uh, gods of the, I mean, it's just, it's really strange. You know, it's, uh, they treat lo- the, the saints as gods. That's really what it is. Okay, and then they had, uh, uh, you know, uh, Rodriguez or whatever the name was, and I was like, I don't think this person's going to speak any English. But anyway, they, uh, uh, it was just like interesting, these amulets and stuff. Okay, and so I thought about this uh, you ever see the people that wear, like, the, they, they want everyone to see that they're Christians. So they wear 
like a big chain, you know what I mean, that has a cross on it or a crucifix on it. And they think that makes them religious looking, you know. And, uh, and anyway, so this is something that uh, Jesus saw. And they had, uh, they had what they were called phylacteries. And uh, the Bible says in, uh, oh, I already read it in, in Luke 20, 46. So let me see. Luke 20, 46 says, beware of scribes. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I think we'll read that in a second. I think we'll read that in a second. Uh, but he's talking about these phylacteries that they had on their head, and it says they broadened their phylacteries. And if you look at uh, Jews today, spiritual Jews that are like, you know, uh, going to the wall to pray, or they're like some kind of rabbis or something like that, a lot of times they'll have these things, and they're huge. And they've got supposedly scripture in them because when the Old Testament talked about, <laughs> like, I write these on as frontlets between your eyes so that you don't forget about it. It's kind of, I think, speaking like symbolically, they took it literally and said, hey, okay, so I'm going to have this big old box on here that has a scripture in it. And if you asked them, hey, what does the scripture on your phylactery say? They'd probably be like, I have no idea. I can't even read Hebrew <laughs> or something like that. But they got that in this wide. Why? So you look at that and say, oh, he's a religious leader, right? This isn't what uh, the Bible teaches that today's Christians and today's Christian leaders should do, like trying to trying to point attention to themselves as some spiritual uh, guru or something. Uh, I remember seeing, uh, uh, I think it was, it wasn't James White. It was uh, maybe Jeff Durbin or something like that. And, and everybody was sharing this thing where he was, uh, he's a, he's a uh, uh, what do you call it, a reformed guy. And uh, anyway, I won't get off on him. But he, uh, he was, everyone was sharing this thing. Thought, Listen to this guy. He went to court, and in court, he was like making a case against abortion. Right? I don't even remember listening to it, but everyone said, oh, it's so great what he's saying. He's standing up, standing against abortion, and he's going to the court system, and he's trying to get these things passed. And I looked at him, and he had a long black robe that was flowing on the ground. And I'm like, why did he wear that? I don't even understand, except to show, like, well, I'm a religious leader, and so I'm wearing I don't know if he preaches in that or what, uh, but anyway. Uh, you understand this idea. We're not supposed to be drawing attention to ourselves as some religious guru, right? And so I think, I personally feel like the fact that I have a suit on and uh, maybe a white tie, classic look sometimes, I mean, a white shirt sometimes, classic look, and this is just a classic. And I'm walking around town. People really don't know if I'm a businessman. They don't know if I'm a, you know, uh, a preacher or if I'm uh, just a, a salesman. Who, who knows what this guy is? But we know this. He's, he's, you know, dressed sharp. And, uh, and he's like somebody, uh, not necessarily wealthy, not gaudy, necessarily doesn't have rings and all this flashy stuff. And, 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 but he looks like somebody who's got himself together and his clothes are ironed and his shoes are polished and his belt looks nice and, and, uh, and, he, and he's taking care of himself. And so uh, uh, I do believe that, and this is a little convicting to me, okay, but <laughs> I do believe as a preacher and as somebody who represents Christ and represents this church. And again, I realize that we're all in that situation to some degree, but me as kind of like setting the example and trying to lead, I should try to look sharp. I should try to be maybe not exactly like the president, but the same mentality of saying, I'm going to take my job seriously. I'm going to, I'm going to give it, uh, uh, you know, make it important to have these uh, certain things looking nice and, and uh, my hair in place and, you know, all these kinds of things are, are good car washed and, and, and just not overboard, not drawing attention to myself being flashy, but showing that I, I represent the Lord and I take my job seriously. I do believe that that could be uh, shown, but not to draw attention to yourself or to be super spiritual. Now, I like this. Jesus also talks about not so much about the priest. Again, that wasn't important. He did away with the office of the priest, but he does mention prophets a few times. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. And Jesus is talking about, uh, about John the Baptist. And in verse 4 it says, And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and, and, and wild honey. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not where Jesus was talking about him. But this is a description of what all we know about him is it says that he had... Uh, this camel's hair, you know, I don't know if it was just like 
you know, you could feel like it felt like a camel or if the material was just made up, made from the hair of a camel. I don't know what that looked like, uh, but this is all it says. And that he had a leather girdle about his loins. That doesn't tell me a whole lot, right? But it does tell me that he was somehow recognized, you know what I mean, to be in a position of a prophet or whatever. Look at uh, uh, Luke. Let me see here. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, and this is what I meant where Jesus is talking about John the Baptist. Luke 7, verse 25. And I like this here. He says, But what went ye out for to see? He's talking about John the Baptist. He said, A man clothed in soft raiment? Look, don't expect to see that. <laughs> if you want to see a prophet, you want to see a, uh, we would say today, uh, the office of a prophet, we would just say it was like a preacher, somebody who's a preacher. You wouldn't expect to see a preacher, a man of God, with authority going to be in soft raiment, okay? You wouldn't see, he says, Behold, they which are gorgeously appareled. No, 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 I'm not looking at being gorgeous, <laughs> okay? I don't need to be gorgeously appareled. Look at the next thing. And they live delicately. I just preached a message not too long ago about delicate. And, uh, and look, we don't want to be seen as being delicate and having all the delicious uh, lifestyle and the delicacies and soft raiment and all that stuff. Nope, that's not even manly. Okay, and he's saying you're going to represent God. You're going to be a man of God. Hey, you need to be somebody who's not worried about having soft raiment and all that. Here's what he says. Uh, but what went you had to see a prophet? Yea, I say to you, and much more than a prophet. Oh, I didn't read the rest of uh, verse 25. He says, behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. All right. <laughs> so now I'm thinking, uh, you know, those people who live luxurious. You know, kings and, and princes and all that stuff. And you can say presidents, but look, there's a big difference between like the king of England and, and maybe at certain ceremonies he sits on the throne and he's got all the gold and he's got all that. Like sometimes the president uh, goes overboard as well. Uh, but there's a big difference between like just dressing nice and looking like uh, dressing something that's not going to go out of style and it's going to last and it's not going to fall apart and it looks sharp. And, and it looks there's a big difference between that and going way extravagant and wearing all the soft clothes. And so here's a trend because everybody realizes, like I said, the majority of people realize, except those who think, hey, if I set this trend, I'll be accepted like the cool guy. And people will say, like, he doesn't follow the, you know, the mold. He, he broke the mold and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm a guy, this is a guy that's going to go and try to wear a T-shirt and jeans and everything while he's preaching. Other than that, most people realize, hey, I've got to wear a suit to be respected, and it's the way that I'm supposed to do to, uh, to look nice and all that. But here's what they'll do. They'll wear like these real like flowery or pink or pastel colors, <laughs> and they'll have skinny jeans and all the, you know, real tight fitting or something like that. And I don't, I don't know how to explain it without showing pictures or something like that, but can you get in your mind like, like this, this guy's wearing a suit, but he looks very soft. You know what I mean? This guy is dressed up and he looks really nice, but he's kind of, there's something kind of like effeminate about him, something soft, something. He's too worried about having the gold cufflinks and the, uh, the fancy gadgets and the, uh, you know, I, I don't even know. I don't want to get started on this, but, uh, but, you know, you can just see that and realize like that person is worried too much about being delicate and doing uh, the, about the dainties, <laughs> you know what I mean, that we talked about a while back. And so Jesus, when he talks about John the Baptist, he says, what did you expect to see? He's like, this was a prophet. He was a man of God. He wasn't a guy that's going to wear all this soft raiment and, and try to be always uh, comfortable and living in luxury and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, what do we know about the way Jesus, Jesus dressed? Now, some people will point to like how he's dressed in Revelation whenever Jesus sees the, I mean, uh, John sees the resurrected Jesus, right? But that's not the same. Because we're all going to have certain attire in heaven, right? We're going to have robes, be dressed in white. I don't know what it's going to look like. But that's not the same. When Jesus was on earth, how did he dress? Now, how many of you have ever heard somebody say, oh, well, Jesus wore, wore uh, uh, purple garments and ro like royalty. Don't you remember whenever the, uh, the soldiers, you know, cast a lot from him? He had his fancy clothes on and stuff like that. Well, not exactly. What we do know is that he had a coat. Right, and I'm going to go to that verse here in a second. And we know that he wore shoes, okay, because John the Baptist says, whose uh, shoes uh, latches I'm not uh, even worthy to, uh, to untie, right? 
Uh, let's look at it. John, uh, uh, let me see here. I didn't write that one down, but look at John 19. John 19, verse 23. We'll look at what it says about his coat. Now, this is interesting to me. I didn't look into it, don't really care too much, but modern versions, uh, most of the ones I'm pretty sure changed from coat and they just put tunic. What's the big difference between a, a tunic and a coat? <laughs> a coat is something that was worn as an outer garment over those things. But uh, anyway, I, I don't know exactly why they changed that. But here's what we know. Jesus had this piece of garment. Look at uh, verse 23, John 19, verse 23. It says, The soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every uh, soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Okay, uh, and then they said in verse 24, uh, they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. In other words, this is why they said that. They weren't saying, let's fulfill scripture, uh, which, uh, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. But I will say this. Now, earlier it says that they put a, uh, a, uh, they put a robe on him. Uh, did I pass that verse? Uh, let me see here. It might not be in this passage of Scripture. I think that was in, that was in Matthew or Mark. But, uh, uh, but anyway, it talks about this, this robe that they put on him. And they said, oh, behold, the king of the Jews or whatever. Right, but that doesn't necessarily say it was his robe for one thing. Uh, but here it does say that he had a coat and he had other raiments that they cast lots, um, they, 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 they parted, okay? So some things they parted, they just took the material and they parted it. And so like, you know, let's say they just had, um, just for an example, like this, this suit jacket. And they said, okay, here's what we'll do. I'll, we'll rip this thing right here. You can have this part, you know, and you can have this sleeve and you can have this part. You say, well, why would they do that? Well, material was, was expensive back then. You know, the Bible uh, talks about that as a, as a pretty uh, uh, important possession that somebody would have. In fact, they would sometimes pay people in raiments of clothes and stuff like that because clothes weren't real easy. Nowadays, we just go to a store and we get one that's been machine made and everything. Back then, they had to make it by hand, uh, and it, it was a lot longer process. And so you can understand how, how expensive they might have been, how important they were. So just to have that garment could have taken it home, their wife could have made it into something else or whatever, or they could have, I guess, but, uh, but it, you understand that it was, it was valuable. And then they saw his coat, and I'm not sure why, the Bible doesn't really say, but it says there were no seams. Normally there would be a seam, uh, you know, that you know, would come down the side, they would sew that together, or, and then maybe sew these sides together, and they would have that coat that they would, that would, they would put over them. Uh, maybe it would wrap around or something, I don't know. In this case, it was just one kind of like it looks sounds to me like almost like a poncho or something like that. It's just one uh, piece of garment, right? There wasn't any seams in it. And I don't know if that was a matter of efficiency or if that was a matter of, you know, hey, it's, it's going to last longer that way. It's not going to rip, you know, because there's no seams. It's just one part. I have, I have no idea. The Bible doesn't say a whole lot about what Jesus said. <clears throat> Again, you could deduce some ideas. Maybe it was more, uh, that was just a, a more lasting way to wear it or whatever. But obviously his clothes were nice enough that they were willing to cast lots on them and part them and they were valuable. And they said, hey, we're not just going to throw this away or throw this in the tomb with Jesus. We're going to keep them for ourselves. Okay, so, so as I said at the beginning of this message, there's not a whole lot of detail I can say about exactly how a preacher ought to dress or exactly how the members of the church ought to dress. Specifically, when you go to church on Sunday, should I dress up or should I dress down or casual? You know, the Bible just doesn't say a whole lot. And this is why I say it is important not to make too much of a deal about it and to allow people to have that freedom and that liberty. And it's, not, uh, it's important that you don't take too much thought about your own clothes and you be over paranoid about, hey, do, do I have the nicest clothes and all this kind of stuff? This is not... That's not the point that I'm trying to make, okay? But, uh, uh, but just some practical application. I got a, f a few things from Scripture. It doesn't say a whole lot on it, so you say, well, why would you preach about it? Well, because I'm talking about these hobby horses, okay? And this is something that was preached for a long time. This is how a preacher dresses, right? He's got a white shirt and he's got all this. Look, there are some reasons. And let me just say this. A lot of times, Independent Fundamental Baptists of the 40s, 50s, 
uh, 60s, 70s even, they get a bad na uh, name because there were certain things that they were really caught up on. Like I said, white shirts. Uh, there was a time when they used, they would preach about wearing the uh, black rimmed glasses. Uh, black, you know, big old thick glasses that you see there. And that was the spiritual thing, man. If you wore those, if you had the wire rim glasses like the Beatles, those hippies, uh, 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 that was that you were going liberal then. And so everybody wore these black glasses. Now, when I went to BBC, I went there for a little while before I went to Heartland and people would make fun of those guys all the time. You remember back then they, you know, there was a time when the guys would make them all wear the black rim glasses and they said that those, uh, metal rim glasses, you know, were sissy and, and made you look like the Beatles and all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't live in that day. You know what I'm saying? I don't live in the day where the Beatles were popular and all the kids wanted to grow their hair like the Beatles and wear the fads of the day. I don't know. I can't learn a lot from that time period. I can't learn a lot from Jesus' day. I can't learn a lot from the priest day in the Old Testament. But I can look around today and see how people dress and uh, use some of this practical, uh, uh, make some practical application to say that these things just make sense, okay? Real quickly, I'm going to fly through this list of just some basic uh, applications I think is wise. <clears throat> Pastors and preachers, and actually just like everybody else, need to be covered, okay? They need to be gender specific, and they need to be modest. That's just basic clothing of the Bible. These are the things that you can get. You need to be gender specific. Don't look like a girl. Don't even try to go anything feminine in your clothing, okay? <laughs> Just look like a man. You need to be modest. You need to be clothed, okay? Uh, the, be the more the better, I think. I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, taking your jacket off when it's hot or, or even having short sleeves. I'm not against it. But being clothed is something that is respectable. People look at that and say, hey, this guy's sharp. He's serious about his job or, or whatever. Uh, then more for casual where you're showing flesh. Everything. Okay? Uh, just like everybody else. Pastors and preachers should look like they're serious about what they're doing. All right? You don't want to just show up sloppy for whatever job that you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you want to look appropriate for what you're doing. In fact, maybe try to look a little bit above you know, what the average person is. You go to a restaurant nowadays, there was a time whenever you, if a family went out to a restaurant to go eat, everybody dressed up and they looked sharp. And nowadays it's just like, wow, I'm a little overdressed. <laughs> you know, I've got a collared shirt on or something like that. Uh, but, you know, hey, there are certain applications where you're like, hey, it would be silly to wear this to this event, or, or I'd be underdressed if I wore this to this event. And I think it's worth thinking about. Uh, just like everybody, pastors should dress for the job that they're doing in a way that makes them feel comfortable and confident. I really believe that that is important. I, I mean, I'm not talking about spending the way too much money on clothing, but do you know clothing that actually fits right and, it, and, and it's the right it's going to last a long time you're going to be way more confident than if you're just wearing something that's uh that feels like it's going to fall apart you know and really you say oh yeah yeah well it must be nice to have a lot of money and buy nice clothes well here's the thing if you buy a cheap you know five dollar shirt from walmart and you've got to buy like one every year or one every six months because they keep ripping and falling apart and they don't hold up in the washing machine you know, as opposed to spending, you know, 50 bucks maybe on a nice dress shirt and that thing lasts you for years and years and years. Well, you're actually doing better, <laughs> you know, financially uh, for the investment that you made. Plus, you got something that's going to hold up. It's going to look nice and uh, and all that. There's nothing wrong with thinking through those kinds of things. I'm not talking about buying uh, soft raiment and fancy apparel, but I'm saying look nice and practical and be comfortable and be confident, okay, uh, with what you're doing. Uh, just like everyone, pastors, and uh, I'm saying pastors, but preachers, people that represent the church, uh, leaders, uh, stuff like that, particularly is who I'm talking to. But again, just like everybody else, pastors should be, when possible, uh, buying durable clothes. I kind of hit on that just a second ago. Uh, I think that that is good, something that lasts. I mean, not just in quality, but I would say this too, something that's going to last in style, right? There are clothes that go out of style it's just as fast as you could say, I don't want to, I don't want to pick on anybody who does this. All right. But uh, it's like, I see all these, <laughs> all these preachers, uh, uh, like just posting pictures of their like silly socks. Right. And they're like, hey, look at these silly socks. And I'm like, how many years are you going to wear those, man? You know what I mean? Wait, I you probably don't wear socks are pretty cheap nowadays. You probably won't wear them for very many years anyway. But the principle behind like, Hey, just jumping on this fad 
and uh, and hey, next year it's going to go out of style or whatever. There are certain things that never really went out of style. Now, I don't want to get up here and look like I I should be living in the 70s or something like that. All right. And everybody looks and it's like, hey, man, this, this guy needs to stop buying his clothes at the thrift store from the 1970s or something like that. No offense if you do that. But I'm just saying, OK, I don't want to do that. Uh, however, there are some things that could that have I'm not kidding have been handed to me that were like made in the 80s or something like that. Maybe it's a jacket or something like that. And I wore it and it just fits with today. It, it's classic. It's timeless. It never went out of style. That's a good investment. And that's something where it doesn't look like you're just trying to jump on the fad and and jump on the, the bandwagon and, and be with the in crowd and all that kind of stuff. Man, let the let the Hollywood people deal with that. You know, let the, the kings and the and the people that are in the media all the time deal with that. We just want to be practical and we want to look nice and, uh, and uh, like I said, comfortable, confident, all that kind of stuff. I hope you get something about out this message. More practical, uh, not a whole lot in the Bible about the specifics of our clothing. Uh, but I do think it's worth mentioning. I do think it's worth bringing out some of these points, making some practical application. And certainly anything we do for the Lord, we ought to do it to the best of our ability. What's going to be the most pleasing to him? What's going to be the most efficient in getting our job done? Most effective in uh, 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 connecting with other people and presenting our message? And those are all things that we should think about. I uh, hope that uh, uh, that helps somebody. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we even have clothes to wear and that you have promised, Lord, that you uh, would take care as we seek first the kingdom of God and you'll provide those things. I pray that you help nobody in here ever get too caught up on having the nicest clothes clothes and being fancy and, and drawing everybody's attention to themselves. We know that's not what we're called to do. Uh, I hope that you would help us uh, not to be too judgmental of clothes and make too big of a deal about that, but to just uh, continue serving you and loving people and doing what you've called us to do. And I pray that you would help us uh, uh, just be wise in our decisions, help us not be too flashy and, and not to be uh, certainly not to... Uh, show our body off, and but the, but rather to cover ourselves and be decent and, and honest. And most important, be pleased by what we do. Everything we do, Lord, whether it's our actions, the words that we say, or even the way in, in which we dress, Lord, I pray that we do it all to the glory of God and that you'd be glorified by it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.